Hello, it's T. And thank you for joining me for I've Got the Power. <laughs> I couldn't resist naming this, uh, this episode, I've Got the Power. I think I'm dating myself back to that uh, rap song from the 80s. So I do want to talk to you about power and empowering our kids. And I've talked about Maria Montessori. I love Maria Montessori. And she always said that we should never do, and, and Rudolf Reicher is also these wonderful, famous child educators said, we should never do for a child what she can do for herself. So we are all, myself as well, guilty of doing for our children some things that they can do for themselves at some times. Now, when they were talking about this, they may have been talking to parents. They were certainly talking to teachers in the classrooms as well. Um, and sometimes there are, um, there are always reasons why we're doing for children what they can do for themselves. My question and the, the conversation that I'd like to have with you is why? What is it that is keeping you, and I can ask myself too, what is it that's keeping me from empowering them in one thing? And I'd like you to try to get one thing in your mind. And I'm going to use a few examples. So, I'll use, uh, I'll use laundry and lunches as examples. Um, if you are making your child's lunches for school, they're going to school in person these days. We're um, experiencing the whole COVID situation, but some schools are in session depending on the school, depending on where you are in the, in the US, around the world. Um, if you're making your child's lunches, and if they're home too, if you're making their lunch, right? But they can make their own. The question is, why? Now, if the answer is because I absolutely love to do it, I get so much out of it, it sort of feeds me in some way that I can't even explain, and by the way, they also know how to do it and they can do it if I can't for some reason. Plus they know how to, you know, make toast and scramble some eggs and make themselves some pasta and make a few things. Like there are other things that they can do in the kitchen. They have skills, they are independent in the kitchen. And I just love to make their lunches. It's my way of contributing. That is one answer. That is a certain kind of answer. Now I want to compare and contrast that when we, I'm gonna talk about laundry. If your child is um, maybe over the age of 12, I'm just gonna pick somewhat randomly. Um, if they're 12, 14, 16, 18, and you are doing their laundry and they don't know how to do their own laundry. So ask yourself why, why are you doing it? Why, how come they don't know how to do it? Maybe, maybe you'll still choose to do it for them while they live at home. However, you're not empowering them right? You're keeping that. And there could be many, many reasons. Of course, you know, I, I never had the time. I never made the time um, is one flavor of reason. Could be I never even considered that they would or could do their own laundry. It was just always such a thing growing up. Like I, I just always thought that I would do my kids laundry. So I didn't think about it that's okay. Any, anything is okay. Now you can think about it. 
right? Does it bring you absolute amazing joy? Maybe it brings you so much joy and they already know how to do their laundry. And that's, that's a reason too. That's a different flavor, right? Um, I'm going to say <laughs> for me, I, I get some satisfaction out of doing laundry. Like there was a whole pile of dirty stuff. Now it's all clean and put away but I don't get special satisfaction out of doing it for my whole house. I do it for my husband and me. This is like just what's worked out for me personally, right? My boys both do their own laundry. And I like, whenever I start feeling like, wow, I really could use more help or wow, you know, I, I see some dirty dishes in the sink or whatever. That's one of the things I try to remind myself of is they do their own laundry. They've been doing their own laundry. And I think of all the loads of laundry that I have not had to do. Thank you. <laughs> it's like they're empowered. So that's the flavor of empower your kids and, and check your model of the world, right? Like if some, if you're doing something that they could do, but they know how to do it and it brings you lots of joy, that's one thing. But if it never occurred to you, or like, oops, I guess maybe they really could do this, then that's, um, that's an opportunity, right? For you to do a little bit of training. And so we're gonna look at a couple of positive discipline tools. And you, you may have already noticed that some of the tools from positive discipline are actually tools in some kind of concrete sense that you can actually use and like whip out and consult with your child in the moment. And some of them are more like concepts. So I have one that's a real concrete tool and we're gonna start with the one that's a concept. And the concept is empower your kids, which we've been talking about, right? That's what this episode is all about, empowering your kids. And so I'm going to take a look at this card and, and actually, so there's five steps on this tool card, empower your kids. And it's kind of funny. It just shows how interconnected everything is in the positive discipline world because every one of these steps that's numbered here is actually another tool in positive discipline. So the first one, teach life skills, right? that is a, a separate, it's a separate tool in positive discipline to take time for training, to um, teach them about the different jobs and, and contributions that they can make, like making their own lunches, like doing their own laundry. So teach life skills. Okay. Number two, focus on solutions together. Now, actually in the most recent episode, we did talk about that and we drilled down. That is a separate positive discipline tool. And there are a sequence of steps to that one that don't overlap too much. It's like a real process. So focus on solutions together. Number three, and this is a really important one, is have faith in your children. And when we say have faith in your children, it's like have faith in your children, trust your children, doesn't mean have faith in them that they are going to do it exactly as you would do it, or that they are going to do it exactly what you think is right, but it's have faith in them that they have their own journey, that they are developing their capabilities in their own way, in their own time. So having faith, more of a, a broad aspect of that, which I love. Number four, is let go. And that's another tool concept in positive discipline, let go. And it's hard, it's, it's hard for us and it doesn't serve our children if we let go <laughs> in a very big way in a short amount of time. It's more about letting go progressively as they become more capable giving them a little more responsibility, having a little more faith in them, teaching them a little more about how they can build their capabilities in the kitchen or wherever. So in small steps, letting go, it's better for us. It's a little easier for us if we do it 
as they progress through each of the stages versus, you know, having uh, apron strings tied, 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 and then suddenly they're gone. It's like, oh my goodness, I'm lost without my child. I can't believe I have an empty nest. Like there will come a time when, you know, it, it's, there, there's a time for that. But if we've been preparing, at least we can have faith that they have the capabilities that they need, that we have guided them along the way. Okay, and then the last step, number five, is increase, this, increase your child's self-awareness by asking questions like, how do you feel about that? What do you think? How does this affect what you would like in your life? So encouraging their self-awareness, which is absolutely wonderful. All these ways that we can empower our children. And so that was the one, the conceptual tool. Now, the second tool, in a, a previous episode, we talked about the anger wheel of choice. So a number of choices that your child could write out or draw out um, for when they're angry. This is not the anger wheel of choice. This is just the regular, the, the regular wheel of choice. And this is, you might not be angry, but these are different choices um, that you can make when it comes time to solve a problem. Okay, so it says use that the wheel of choice um, as one way to teach problem solving. So number one, brainstorm with your children a list of possible solutions to everyday challenges or conflicts or problems that might arise. And then of course, on the same pie-shaped chart, and you can divide it into anything that four is okay for, you know, maybe as a, a minimum, but even better is six or eight. Um, in each section, write one solution and let children draw illustrations or symbols. And so I'm going to, uh, to read you a few. They have a little um, wheel of choice on the card, on the tool card. So I'll read you a few of those. So it could be share and take turns, apologize, pick another game, count to 10 to cool off. So you get an idea of some of these ways that kids can, um, kids can look to solve a problem. And it, of course, they'll depend on the child's uh, age and development level. And then number three, when there is a conflict, suggest that the child use the wheel of choice to find a solution that makes sense to solve that problem. And so that's wonderful, right? Because if we can guide them into just even thinking about the fact that there are a number of different ways to solve problems, they get to draw them out. They're taking ownership as they're drawing and writing. And then when a problem arises, think of how much control that child has to consult their wheel of choice and make the choice, which choice. Amazing stuff, right? So empower your kids, have faith in your kids at their level of development. As always, I hope that this served and would love to hear any questions or experience that you have with empowering your children. I will see you in the next episode. Bye for now.